everybody. We are asking the undertaker to come to close the casket for us. And um, we are going to ask the choir to follow us as we are going to march in. We have a a couple more seats up here. I saw Reverend Mackenzie is in the audience. A seat is up here for her. And a seat is here for Pastor Brown, Sister Joyce Brown. And also a seat is here for Pastor Bailey. I don't know if we're able to accommodate any other of the ministers on the platform. The platform is small, and um, we are having a lot of different clergy. So we are asking Pastor Brown and Pastor Mackenzie and Pastor Bailey. We are going to march from the outside, and then you will just march with us as we take our stand inside the building. So at this time, we are going to ask the choir to come with us, and also the other ministers on the platform to follow us.
Thank you very much. Do not be afraid. For I am the first and the last. I was dead. I'm now I'm alive forever. And I hold the key of death and hell. This morning we are gathered together for the funeral service of Sophia Sapleton, a beloved lady to us. And so our time has expired and she is no longer with us in this life. And so this morning we gather to share the last. And so I'm asking you this morning to worship with us in the beauty of holiness. We realize that the space is not really large for everybody to be seated on the inside, but we hope and trust that the time you spent with us, it may be a blessed one in the Holy Spirit. I want to share condolences with the Sapleton family, Pastor Sapleton that is standing beside me here as he suffered loss of his first daughter that is born to him. And so it's a really tough time for the family and a tough time for him. But the writer declared to us that it was appointed unto man once to die. And after that comes your judgment. I want to encourage the family that they stay strong. And stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the old armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days. The family declared that they want to have a short funeral. Yes. And so pastor told me that the funeral is scheduled for two hours. And so let me make it plain before I ask the moderator to come, that if you have a tubit to pass on, your time limit is two minutes. If you go above that, then I cut you off. This is one leader that I want you to follow protocol. That you don't come and you have a song, and then you want to talk after that. If you are going to sing, you sing. But you can't sing and talk so that I'll be able to keep up with the rules and regulation that Pastor Sabaton had laid in my hands. And so this morning, worship in the beauty of holiness. And praise God if the Spirit of God attend to you for you to shout hallelujah. Amen. Shout hallelujah without watching anybody because the Spirit of God is that limited. And so this morning, as we are about to begin, I hope and trust that at the ending of the service, our hearts may be blessed and say it was good for us to be here. At this time, I'm going to invite Pastor Campbell to come and to moderate the service. I'm resting Pastor Sapleton because it's his time now. And so I'm going to allow him to sit down and keep quiet and listen to what is going on today. God bless you, brothers and sisters.
Praise the name of the Lord. Praise I worship the name of the Lord. Let's give away the holy hands and praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Open remarks have already passed by our previous year. Bless the Lord. But I just want to say to the Sabbathan family, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Bless the name of the Lord. If you look on your program, right away you will see we are going to begin the opening in for service, homegoing service, as I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on through him. I must win. I wanted to put your voice together and sing melodiously. Bless the name of the Lord. And journey to his hand, sing him as I go. Finding souls to Calvary, to the prince of gold. Many arrows takes my soul from the dark living. What my God leads me on, through me I must be. Oh, I want to see. 
went uh, millions to give us to the children of grace. Let us quiet our hearts for prayer. Holy God, we approach your mercy seat even now. In a time like this, Lord, when family are grieving the loss of a loved one, we ask you, loving God, to envelop them in your divine care. We pray, O oh God, for the co-workers of our dear sister who have gone on before us, those she had touched in many ways. I ask you, even now, Lord, that you will comfort them as they go through this time of bereavement. I pray and ask you, loving God, that whatsoever is to be said and done here today will bring glory to your name. And at the end of this service, somebody will cry out, I am healed, I am delivered, I am set free, and I'm saved by the grace of God. Draw near to us now, Lord, and let your presence be felt among us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus again. Praise the Lord. I just want you to look at your program and follow the program. Bless the Lord. We we'll love for our first lesson. We'll be coming from Psalms 90, 1 through 12, and that will be done by G. D. J. Thomas. This. And immediately after that, following, we'll have a selection by Reverend, Reverend Ryan Kennedy, cousin. And immediately after that, also, we'll have the second lesson. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 58. That will be done by Janelle McDonald, niece. And I want you to come in that order. Follow it, please. Bless the Lord. Asleep in the morning, they are like grass which goes up. In the morning, it flourishes and goes up. In the evening, it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor on sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Here ended a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying, Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. Come on, come on, somebody praise the Lord this morning. Glory to your name, Jesus. We are happy. We have to be happy in spite and despite of the situation. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. I have to build some courage up to come here this morning. Amen? Amen. But God Almighty is still God. Yes. God Almighty is still God. No, I'm not supposed to talk. Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. Um, this song is Reflect Myself and Sophie. And I'm only going to do one verse of this song to allow others to do what they need to do. Amen? Amen. I didn't know today would be your last And that I have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb, I can't feel anymore Wishing you would walk right back through that door And tell me that I'm only dreaming There must be another angel around the throne tonight Verses 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, 
I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here in the God's holy word, we say. shall be changed. Oh, hallelujah. one Christian High School again and we'll have number seven in this section Livings, Livingston McDonald bless the name of Jesus I wanted to follow very quick and brisk in this order bless the Lord Christian High School Thank you. Hey, let's 
To the moderator, the officiating ministers, family members, members of the Christian High School family, past and present, friends of the family, ladies and gentlemen, all good morning. I'd just like to start quickly by saying Miss Sapple spent 28 years four and a quarter months with us at the Christian High School. I I don't think she will ever forgive us if we are just to do her tributes in two minutes. So I'm just asking Pastor for an additional we didn't practice how to sing and talk, but we'll try our best. I want to start by asking the Christian High School family, past and present, just to stand with me. I want to apologize for our board chairman, Dr. Ansel Gilman, who is unavoidably absent, but has asked that I convey his regards and sympathies to the family, friends, and loved ones of Miss Sabotan. I want to acknowledge the presence of our vice principal, Mrs. Erica Ferguson, who worked very close with our departed colleague on the shift she served for many years. Vice principal for shift two, Mr. Dean Spence, who is also here along with the many academic staff across both ships, as well as members of the non-teaching staff. Now, a wise man once said, in the book of life, the deeds of teachers are immortalized in the hearts and minds of their students. It is with heavy hearts and profound sorrow we gather to honor the life and legacy of Miss Sophia Sapleton a stalwart of education and a beacon of inspiration at the Christiana High School. From her humble beginnings in 1995 to her distinguished tenure as a senior member of her staff, Ms. Sapleton's impact has been profound and everlasting. As Ecclesiastics 3, 1 reminds us to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Miss Sapleton's season among us was marked by unwavering dedication, unyielding passion, and an enduring commitment to the betterment of those around her. Miss Sapleton's journey with the Christian High School began on September 1, 1995. From the outset, her passion for nurturing young minds and fostering academic growth was evident. Permanently appointed on March 1, 2012, her steadfast presence became a cornerstone of our school's foundation, enriching the lives of countless students and colleagues alike. An advocate for lifelong learning, Ms. Sapton pursued higher education relentlessly. In 2002, she embarked on a journey to attain her bachelor's degree in mathematics at the University of the West Indies. Despite the challenges, she emerged triumphant, armed with knowledge and a thirst for educational excellence. Upon her return, Ms. Sapleton's leadership qualities shone brightly, leading to her temporary promotion as an acting senior teacher in 2007 and 2009, respectively. Her response, and I quote, many thanks for selecting me to act as a senior teacher, and I promise to work to the best of my ability to achieve the goals and objectives set out by the school. And that she did actively 
whether she was feeling well or she was a bit under the weather. This diligence and dedication culminated in her recommendation for a permanent position as a senior teacher in 2012, a role she embraced with distinction and graced up to her last day at Christian High School. In 2011, Ms. Sapleton further furthered her academic pursuits, earning a Master's of Science degree with a major in Educational Leadership from Central Connecticut State University in New Britain, Connecticut, Connecticut in the United States. Her relentless pursuit of knowledge was matched only by her compassion and empathy for those under her tutelage. Throughout her tenure, Ms. Sapleton's impact echoed throughout our halls, particularly on the shift she served. Her meticulous attention to detail was evident in the commendation she received for reviewing an impressive 768 reports on the shift she served. One could say that she had an eager eye for detail as whatever she did was well done. In 2023, Ms. Sapleton's dedication was further recognized as she was named the top teacher for shift one on Teacher's Day. This accolade was a testament of her unwavering commitment to excellence and her profound impact on the lives of her students. As Joshua 1 verse 9 commands us, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord our God will be with us wherever we go. Miss Sapleton touched the lives of so many, leaving an indelible mark on our hearts as well as memories. So as we reflect on the profound impact she had on our school community and the countless lives she enriched, let us carry forward her, her legacy of dedication, compassion, unwavering commitment to excellence. May her spirit continue to inspire us and may her memory be a blessing to all who knew her. Miss Sophia Salome Sapleton, May your soul rest in peace and perpetual life shine.
Praise the name of the Lord. Wonderful singing, grace of the Lord. close friend and confidant. We get her not only to mourn the passing of my dear niece, and I do identify with you as we grieve in our own ways. Some of us will cry, some of us will weep, some will even holler, and some will bow. But as we are here to celebrate a remarkable life, indeed, her parting is sweet song. Looking around the room today, I can see many familiar faces, as well as some new ones. So many of you love Donnie. I realize that even in death, she's looking out for us. This is not surprising to me. The people she has supported are here to support us. And this is a beautiful thing. This is a beautiful feeling. This celebration serves as a reminder of the extraordinary impact she had on our life. She was truly a beacon of kindness, love, care, emotional intelligence, and empathy. I choose to sum up all these traits in one word, sweet. She was a real deal. She was very, a very sweet human being. Most of you will remember her sweetness and lifetime memories from primary school to a math teacher. For me, I'm one of the few who enjoyed those privileged those privilege memories from she was a newborn. As a boy, I got the delicate job of taking out the babies in the morning to get vitamin D son. <laughs> a son for me. And during those times, then I presented this very, very positive energy from that early. This was a little baby I held in my arms, fed and rocked to sleep. The people connection was there from early. She was a very sweet baby. Another important task assigned to me was to get the living room sparkling clean. Donut caring nature was evident from a toddler. She would never, never walk in the area as I'm cleaning. She always walk around from a toddler, two or three years old, that it recognized that as that caring person. I also observed the way she intermingled with workers who helped around the house and farm. She was a magnet to the workers. Her warm-hearted nature, vast generosity, and infectious smile are just a few of the qualities that we fondly remember. With her gentle strength and unconditional love, she greeted with every hug, and we did have our signature hug. And the dedication she showed in ensuring that every interaction was meaningful, she impacted wisdom and love to each of us. In times of sorrow and grief, may we remember Danette's quiet strength and genuine care for others. May her kind-hearted spirit guide us as we continue our journey in life. Let us cherish the love laughter, and life lesson than it generously shared. As we pay respect to our dear Donnet, let us recognize her as an inspiration and beacon of hope. Her selflessness and patience have been valuable lessons for us all. And fittingly, one of this marvelous teacher's best lessons and homework, because she did give homework, is to ask us to step back and contemplate, oh, we can serve others and leave a positive impact on our world. Amen. Just as she did. Just as that did. In doing so, we would honor our memory and ensure our legacy lives on in our heart and of those who love us. In the end, what is what truly defines our character and enriches our life is the imprint we leave in the hearts of those we touch. 
At this time, like this, I'm supposed to be strong. But I, I do have a little secret. I have a weak spot for internet. This is not what I hope for. My hope was for Donald giving tribute to me. It's my plans versus God's plans. I will forever remember Donald's signature smile, hugs, and emotional intelligence. Rest in peace, my precious niece. We, we will love you deeply and will forever miss. You were so sweet. Surely, sweeten is sweet sorrow. Cheer up, everyone. church and I hear a voice from heaven saying unto me blessed are the dead which die in the Lord for they shall rest from their labors and their works do follow them the person I speak of today is Miss Sophia Salome Sapperton Sophie Salome Sapperton. <laughs> Sophie, <laughs> Donnett, Miss Sapperton, teacher. She was a member of the United Emmanuel Holiness Church. After being saved and baptized in her early teens, that was on the 27th of November, 1987. She was baptized by the late Bishop L.A. Sapperton. At that time, she took her church very serious. She dedicated the dedication and support she provided in the youth fellowship, the department, the youth department was paramount. She was an ordained, active, and dedicated Sunday school student. Also by the quiz master, organizer, and coordinator. She was one of the young people's favorite person. Miss Sapperton was empowered to bring solutions and was never a part of the complainers. She participated in the youth choir and always accompanied us on many trips to convention at Bambury Linstead in those early years. As she gets older and pursue her career, Underlying sickness and schoolwork robbed her from serving and attending church on a regular basis. However, she attended whenever she could, but she always supported us financially. She would allow her vehicle to be used to transport many persons to and from church service and other functions in the church. Miss Sophia slowly placed herself into everyone's heart as a teacher, a friend, and a caregiver. Amen. She was a pure-hearted person. Amen. Always humble and helpful. Amen. As it is written in St. Matthew 5, verse 8. 
It stated, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. She was sincere and honest in all her doings, a genuine person that loved people. I'm talking about Sister Sapperton. Therefore, we have the assurance that she is resting in the arms of Jesus. I would to God that many of us have the heart that Sister Sapperton had. She was a genuine person. Sleep on my sister. God bless you. Yes, Sophie, my girl. Mm -hmm. I got the memo, and I want to tell you, I think I understood the assignment, because I'm indeed wearing hot pink <laughs> from head to toe, and I guess everyone here will vouch for that as well. And yes, they're shaking their head it's in agreement with me. Hello, everyone. My name is Marcia Samuels, and I'd like to refer to myself, I am the one of Sophie's sister from another mother. Now I know, I know, I know, I know you want to claim that coveted spot because she's oh so sweet, but guess what? In my defense, I knew her first. And that counts for a lot, all right? So sorry, Mr. Adrian Sinclair. I don't know if you're here today. I saw your post on Facebook. But your group of four with Sophie, that was just a little Sophie fling. Our paramount group of four at Clarendon College was the original thing, all right? That started almost 40 years ago when Sophie, Shan, and I met sitting very close in a class that at that time was known as 1F. Yes, yeah, so alphabetically arranged in those years, we were the class of the P's, the Q's, the R's, and the S. Now from day one, the Sapperton sisters stood out because the icebreaker asked them to state their names and where they're from. Now all of us who claim that we come from city, never heard of a place much as the soul who lived in Babo. <laughs> and I too had a similar situation because Mineral High's housing scheme was just a brand new construction. So like Shannon and Sophia, every time we introduced ourselves, we had to draw a map and give direction. See, Bob Wool, you're supposed to be like where we come from. Come from right, you said that. You said we come from, all right? Um, so that was most of our days. So therefore, with the Sappleton sisters and I having this ordeal over and over again, this girl from Mineral Heights and Sophie, we became inseparable friends. Now our bond tightened even more because we found out that we shared a birth month with only eight days apart. So with that, we took up, you know, permanent residence in each other's hearts. And, and I know right now you're trying to figure out what, uh, what the birth is. Yes, look at the program. Hers is January 16th, and mine, of course, January 8th. Okay, so let me sidetrack here for a second and just tell you just how Sophie was. And you already said that she was so sweet. Let me tell you something. Sophie never forgot. I don't know, she was the goat, right? We are cappies, we are goat, but the greatest of all times. She never forgot to tangibly acknowledge or celebrate my birthday, regardless of my, lo my location or internet connection, all right? Amen to that. This woman, since we met 1986, to January 8th, 2024, has always made sure to send me well wishes via an email, a card, a note, a text. I did not know, let me just share this with you real quickly, I did not notice how special she was to me and me to her until the advent of email. You know, I have to clear it up because everybody thinks that email their own long time and internet, but no. But I was at campus at Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It was a very cold, cold morning. And I went to the lab, the computer lab, and I was trying to fix up some, some assignments. 
I wasn't addressed appropriately, but somehow I figured out my Yahoo email setup. And back in the day, you know what I'm talking about. You know the song, what it meant when it was dialing up, and you figure out that right. So finally, my email worked, right? In the lab, I'm jumping up on an email work. And the first email that came was from my brother saying it worked, test, test, test. But you know the second email come from? The second email I've ever had at the advent of emails came from Sophia Sappleton. She was wishing me a happy birthday. You don't know, let me tell you, you don't know how that simple gesture warmed my heart emotionally and physically lifted my spirits. Sophia is all the way in Jamaica. Um, I'm in a place where my mother still referred to that behind God. And there she was. I've never seen her since we left high school graduation. And she had gone on to Church Teachers College, and I went to College of Ag in Portland. But guess what? After all this time, she still remembered to send me a birthday wish. So, 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 so let me put you at ease because I know you said a group of four, and I know I have a lot of math folks in here from Christina High School. So let me do the math for you because I can count. Two plus two equals four. So Sophie and I in the group were two, and then about the final two girls that fortified our gal pack or girl power band came in fourth and fifth form. Four, four and five as one. We had now added in Dalia Palmer and Andrea Cameron. A shared passion for science and math, we four became the damn sister, Dalia, Andrea, Marcia, and Sophia. Together we decided to beat the odds, vowing always to help, support, motivate, celebrate, and even titivate each other. We studied tirelessly together. We cheered for our superstar athlete, Sophia. No, she could have run? Because me can't run, but she could have run, right? We even mourn the loss of our favorite Spanish teacher, Miss Edwards, together. I've never had the Espanol since then. We rearranged others' hair. Mommy, I know much time you sent her there with plaits, but she came back with that tight pinchers bun. I was the culprit, all right? I was the one rearranging their hair. But in my defense, I never lose them here, so I was a good hairdresser. Now we even serenaded each other because that's the bar of my elder brother's cassette and tape player. Brought it to school and we'll stop, pray, place, rewind, come again to write down all the words of our favorite song. I don't know if you know this one. It was Mariah Carey's hit, Vision of Love in 1990. Treated me kind, sweet destiny. I had a vision of love. We even had our own Christmas parties. Compliments of Sophia. So because, you know, our parents were similar. Show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Our parents were similar. So we never went to parties, uh, much less school trips, because you know we always stay in unison. You know if we praise them, stay already not. Nobody ask them figure I'm gonna tell you, no. <laughs> but guess what we did? We still had time to celebrate with each other. So compliments of Sophia, she always happened to have a 32 ounce can of premium Borden eggnog. Thank you, Mommy, because everybody come from France when I was before I won. So we got that. She always went to school. I would bring the can opener. Andrea would get two glasses and her mother break front. Taylor would bring two more glasses. Put with lunch money together, buy a patty and cocoa bread, and trust me, we feasted and cheered each other along, wishing for good health and long life. Listen, I could go on, but I know I have over two minutes now. I could go on, sorry, Pasta. I could go on, but I know you are gathered here today, either in person or virtually, and you all have similar memories in the many ways in which Sophia Salome Sappleton touched our lives. For Dale and I, as we reflected on our times together, the most compelling thing for us was Sophie's strength, her determination to defy the odds. Sophia embodied Clarendon College's school motto. She persevered and she excelled like no other. Humble, graceful, pragmatic, authentic, forgiving, understanding, regardless of the challenges, regardless of the setbacks, regardless of even excruciating pain, she never complained. She offered no excuses. She took the bitter with the sweet, and she made the very best of this. She showed us through her life that we must use our time to transform the dullness of our dusty lives into sparkling diamonds. Sophie, girl, I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you. And I feel you all know two things that you can do for her right now. First thing, first things first. My last text from her happened on January 16th, 2024. I was complaining about my birthday being on a Monday, and she even came back and said, Sophie said, girl, hush, 
I don't like Monday work, very day, you know, but one hour, enjoy it. And then that was my very last text to her. And her response to me was, when I said her, her birthday, which is January 16th at 5.07 a.m., she read, she responded at 8.15 a.m., Marsha, thank you so much, hearts, love you always. What a friend to have for 40 years. So as we, as her uncle said, and friends have said, she leaves a legacy with us, and it will be remiss if we do not spend the time and memorialize her legacy by making sure that we live, we laugh, and we love each other genuinely. So from Delia Palmer and myself, we would like to extend, of course, our love and deepest sympathy to everyone here, the family we're here today as well. Again, Sophie, you have run your race, and you have fought, girl, you have fought a darn good fight. Rest on, my sweet girl, until it's time to take flight.
Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Ain't it sweet just to know one day we'll meet. We are going one by one. And one day we are going to meet our sister. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus again. Bring all the hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you miss me.
Praise the name of the Lord, church. God can work it out. Bless the Lord. Only the Lord we can depend on to work it out for us. Because he had a control over them. The righteous said he's going to destroy death one day. And there will be no more death. Bless the name of the Lord. Coming along to us. Bless God. We have. We have uh, Liz, Liz, Livingston MacDonald, brother of the deceased. He will be coming. Bless the Lord. Well, uh, this is uh, my little sister, uh, her big brother. My sister is gone. And it hurts a lot. See, I thought I knew pain. I had a cold but a stone and it was so intense that I fainted. And I thought that was the most hurtful thing that I have ever felt. Until I feel grief. Oh well, you see grief, grief has to come from a place of love. Because you have the love. And then you have to have someone you can love. Someone who is lovely, loving, lovable. And there, my sister was five stars. They say it's appointed for each man to lead. The time is born, and when he dies. But what matters most is what happened in between. They dash, they hyphen. And I can tell you, my sister was multi hyphenated. Okay. The wealth of a man is in his family. And my sister had a big family. And let me explain something to you. There was a family that she was born in. Okay? Brothers and sisters. And true love, we became friends. And there were friends that she had met along the way that through love, they became family. And that went to the friends of the family and the family of the friends. And my sister was well rich. She was well to her family's country. She was big. My sister came into this world and she changed the world. She shone bright. She stood tall. My sister, it's gone. And there's pain. But as great as the pain is, the greatest thing is the pride she has left us. The happiness. The example that she has set for us. My sister was my hero. My hero. My sister is gone. She came into this world and she came to us. And she's gone into the other world ahead. And I know when we shall all go that we're not going to be there alone because she'll be there to greet us. Because that's her. That's she came to this world and she walked with us. She never walked alone. And she walked on. And she will never, she will never be alone. Walk on this, Sophie. Banji. Walk on. You're never, ever alone. Thank you. 
Cooper, Reverend Winston Sappington, Reverend Campbell, Reverend Bailey, and Williams, the other members of the platform party, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good morning. You're never too small to make a difference. I met Sophie in 1995 when she joined the staff at Christian High School as a teacher of mathematics. It didn't take long for us to discover that she was the ultimate professional. She was meticulous and very organized. Due to her awesome work ethics, within five years she was promoted to acting senior teacher. In this role, she performed with distinction as she was very detail-oriented and always used her initiative to deal with whatever problems she encountered. Soon after, she was appointed permanently in this position. A very astute individual, she was always eager to learn new things. Her request was, always, show me how it's done. Her can-do attitude was admirable, and she took on every challenge like the true champion she was. She hated mediocrity and had no use for you if you measured work, were lazy, or unpunctual. One morning, a teacher walked into the office look, looking very irritated. Sophie asked her what was wrong. She responded, I received a late warning notice. Sophie said, if you deserve it, you get it. <laughs> the teacher then told me, you will never live long enough to write me another one. <laughs> Sophie laughed, she laughed, and she laughed. And then she said, Auntie Rico, and I knew that tone, and she had three different ones for me. The professional one, the one when she was annoyed with me, and the one when she was joking around. Still laughing, she said, you will never live to write me one of those. <laughs> if she was ever late, she was really not feeling well and had to stop at the doctor's office or there was an accident on the road. And she was one of the persons traveling from the furthest to get to school. Throughout the years, our friendship grew and we became sister friends. And she was with me during almost every situation, be it professional or personal. When Sophie called you friend, she adopted your family as well, and you did likewise, as she was very family oriented. You knew all her siblings by name before you met them, as she was always doing something for one or the other. She was a big sister, a role she took seriously. She watched over her siblings like a hawk. The question would be, Sophie, what are you doing today? Her response would be, I'm doing some business for mommy or daddy, or sorting out something for Maki, Denny, Asif, or Shana. Or she was sorting out David or Dieter. <laughs> she found her greatest joy in the happiness of those she loved, and her greatest accomplishments in their success. She never considered any task too big, to perform for her family and for those who were blessed to call her friend. Being kind and helpful was her motto. As she did whatever she could to help those she came in contact with to succeed. If it was offering a ride, taking someone food, helping with an assignment, standing with you to sickness or sorrow, Sophie was there. She genuinely cared about people and was always asking if we had taken something to eat. The last Thursday she was at school, she walked into the office at break time and said, Aunt Rita, you need to stop what you're doing and get something to eat. I told her I was just finishing a document. Her response was, I'm taking up your food and by the time I finish eating it, you should be ready. I laughed and replied, yes, boss. To which she re retorted, Mr. D is not here to see that you eat, so I know the boss of you. That was Sophie. 
when the vice principal job was advertised, she told me I had to apply. I responded, me, Sophie? I don't need that headache. She, Auntie June, Wilson, and Dalmach kept urging me to apply and promised to stand by me. If I was successful, she said, apply. If you get it, we will cover you from day one. You will never have to carry the burden alone as we will be there for you and they were. Sophie said, as long as I am able, you will have help. She was my, one of my sounding boards, my autocorrect. Oftentimes the voice of reason. And she ensured I was never caught flat-footed. If the ministry wanted a document in a rush, and I had to stay up until the wee hours in the morning, she was up with me on the phone. I'm saying, Sophie, go to your bed. I can function on little or no sleep. And Mr. D would help. She would say, we're finishing it properly, as you're going to be hit with a whole new set of issues in the morning. We would go to bed at two, and Sophie would be there on two. She had a mind like a steam trap, and didn't forget anything. Sometimes in the wee hours of the morning, the message would come, are you sleeping? When I responded, she would say, we forgot this. It was never you need to do this. It was we have to fix this. Asif says it best when he says, Sophie runs background support like no one. She was never flashy or showy. She was just simply Ellen. She was dedicated and humble. She never wanted to be in the spotlight, but was a mighty force behind the scenes, always ensuring that quality work was produced, as her hallmark was excellence at all times. We knew Sophie was ill, and her illness was serious. We called her illness a double woman. She would explain it eloquently and gave us the instru instructions as to what to do if we couldn't reach mommy if she became ill at work. She had many paid fit days and nights, but she never complained and continued to work regardless. Sometimes she would be in pain and we knew the pain was bad. However, when asked, do you want to give me the work so I can send someone to your class? Her response would be, no, Auntie Rika. I'm not earning my payback yet. There will be days when I just can't go, and then you can do that. She never expected any special treatment because of her illness. Her only request was that she wasn't given a class upstairs as some days she just couldn't climb the stairs. A special person, a woman of action with a good heart. Sophie was always thankful and appreciative. Whatever was done for her, be big or small, she expressed sincere thanks. Her last words to me at 1.20 a.m. on the morning when she died, was thank you, Antoinette. One of the strongest women I knew, she never whined or complained, as she dealt with whatever life threw at her with a cheerful spirit. I was not prepared for her passing at this time. I had braced for it last Easter, when she was very ill. All I could hear was Charmin saying, you need to come. When I flew in, mommy said we lost Sophie and she was resuscitated. She never fully regained her strength from that bout of illness. In early January, when she started complaining of not feeling well, little did I know that I would have to stand here today doing the hardest task I've ever done. She warned us that if she ever had to do surgery, it would be because it was a matter of life or death. 
To the end, she was strong and resolute. Sophie was real, no pretense. She said it like it was. I thank God for her life, for all the laughter, all the tears, all the arguments, all the joys, and loads of creativity. On the morning when Sophie died, Jermaine remarked, Miss Sparky, you are so strong. Actually, I'm not. I was just obeying Sophie's instructions as she told me, one man can't stop, no show. The show must go on. And to recall, don't let anybody use my passing as an excuse not to do their work. I could go on and on. But I may hear the tap. As in a meeting, one tap at the table meant I had forgotten something important and the message would come sliding across. <laughs> or there would be two taps, which meant she thought I had said enough and should stop talking. <laughs> I do not wish to get two taps to <laughs> We've lost a teacher extraordinaire, a remarkable woman. A beautiful soul, a genuine and sincere friend. Her boundless love and unwavering support were gifts that made a remarkable difference to my life and to the lives of all she touched. Her passing has left a void that can never be filled. She lived her dash well. Walk good, my friend. Rest in peace. As your work here on earth is done, and your memory will forever inspire us to appreciate the incredible strength of a woman. Her life aptly reflects this quote by Michelle Obama. Success isn't about how much money you make, it's about the difference you make in people's lives. That's so good.
of the Lord. And the writer said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hallelujah. It's no time for the word. But just before we call our overseer to the podium, I just want to recognize the presence of Reverend Dixon down there in the pew. Hallelujah. Be welcome, Rev. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We have with us today a man of God, one that was grown up in this very church. Hallelujah. And he was ordained as a deacon. And immediately after that, for serving this church and other places, hallelujah, the Lord have anointed him up to a pastor, hallelujah, Amen. and growing, growing, and doing the work of the Lord, gaining soul for the kingdom, hallelujah, the Lord of elevate him, hallelujah, up to an overseer of the work of the Lord, hallelujah, and right now, congregation, I present no other than Reverend Cooper to the church. Overseer Cooper congregation receive him in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just before I say something, there is word of condolence came from Boston and um, to the Sutton's family and I am just going to ask Sister Byra, which is the overseas correspondent secretary to just read that for us. Yes, uh, bless the Lord everybody. I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. We here at the United Emmanuel Holiness Church headquarters, headquarters, Boston, grieve with you on the passing of your loved one. Mistress Sophie, on the passing of your loved one, Miss Sophie, so the beloved daughter of your, you and Pastor Sophie, all the members of our quarters send you and the entire family and friends our condolences. Our prayers are out and are with you during the time of sickness. Because of Mr. Stapleton's relationship with our own Pastor Stapleton and overseer Pastor Cooper, we have a uh, uh, Headquarters and the entire bus stand with the board of hospitals surrounding, surrounding churches send our heartfelt prayers and greetings to all your Thank you. Thank you very much, missionary and fire. We, let me begin this way by greetings to the ministers, Pastor Sapleton, as a host pastor, and all the other members of the clergy, ministers in the pew, Other distinguished ladies and gentlemen in the audience, brothers and sisters, children, and friends, I greet you today in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our soon coming King of glory. I was just thinking a while ago that 
because my announcement this morning was two minutes I was just saying to myself am I in the same shoes But when I listen to those who had spoken, I realized that every single person had broken the two minutes. So then, if everybody had broken the two minutes, I don't think it would be anything if I to break it. But I say this to you, brothers and sisters, that even if I break it, I still want to be obedient to what Pastor Sapperton and said, we are 15 minutes over the time. So then, the few things I want to share with you today, I want to be brief in what I am saying. And I have a topic that I want to place to the church today. And my topic today is prepare for the coming of the King. That King will be one who will judge us of all the things that we have done, whether it be good or evil. And I quote to you today from 1 Corinthians 15, and I quote one verse, verse number 51. Behold, I show you 
a mystery. That we shall not all sleep. But there is going to be a change. You believe that, church? Sophie is sleeping today. But there is going to be a change. And the writer declares that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout of the voice of the angels. And the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the glory of his resurrection we shall change from the mortal Sister, hallelujah. 
Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Our sunshine. So, Miss Salome, Salome, she would correct us, Sapleton, she prefers Salome. So, Miss Salome, Sapleton, our sunshine, graced us with her first ray of light on Monday, January 16, 1974, according to my mom, in mid afternoon. For the newly wedded couple, Justina Dorothy Keene, and Sir Winston St. George Sappleton, Sunshine, then called Mahmoud, chubby little thing and the junkie that she was, was the first born girl, and as she likes to remind us, especially me, the oldest and therefore the only one who should be doing any bossing around of anyone else. As you can see from the pictures on the program, both parents lovingly doted on their first child together. She loved every single minute of being mommy's girl, and that is like everything. Mind you, you should all know that Sunshine was everyone's personal favorite. Among the siblings, aunties, uncles, grandparents, and all the relatives and friends, the sentiment was always the same. She's the one who is my favorite. And she's not shy about reminders of that at all, when necessary. So especially, Sophie, to everyone, that we almost, we all almost had our own names for her. She loves every single one of them as they represented the unique relationship she had with each of us. Donnet, Date, Sophia, Sophie, Aunt Sophie, Sapu, Sap. The list is an exhaustive one. Sunshine, the latest addition to this list, emerged recently as with each episode she had, she had nonetheless remained upbeat despite being in tremendous pain at times. Good morning, Sunshine, would be the regular greeting she woke up to each morning, in person, by her ever-present mom, or electronically from her siblings who were away. How are you feeling today, Sunshine, we would ask. Be okay, she would respond. You sure? We would follow up. Yes, she would say. After not to do me. Slightly agitated by our persistent demands to know that she was really doing good. You may wonder, why is she called G? Well, since you've asked. Our grandfathers, all three of them, yes, I said three, had their special relationship with Sophie. Grandfather Keen, Tata, would only refer to her as my princess. My princess, can you come and cut my nails, my sweetheart? He would ask. Yes, come in, grandfather. She would beam and prance over, gently undertaking the important task delegated to her by her beloved. Grandfather, granduncle Pa, called her his little Don Don. Mind you, the only one allowed to use this nomenclature. picture. It was grandfather Sappleton, Mas Dolph, however, that dubbed her his dawn girl early in her life. Sophie loved it. And would literally grow, glow with pride and boast a wicked smile whenever she was referred to as such by family. We more fully adopted and consistently referred to her as Don G after grandfather's departure at a time when she also, Sophie, proved herself to be the amazing athletic champion she was in high school. G is a derivative of this apt nomenclature. She is not just our sunshine, but also our forever dawn girl, our G. Sophie's childhood was filled with joy, happiness, and lots of mischievous good times. She was a happy child. In many ways, she's quite a paradox. <laughs> Most people fit into specific categories, including personality types, not Sophie. She's both athletic and cerebral. She's always problem solving. She's about the business of fixing things, and yes, people too, if we're perfectly honest. 
When the radio kept sticking and messed with her muse flow of music, she pulled it apart bit by bit, slowly, painstakingly, and meticulously put it all back together after identifying the issue and, of course, fixing it. This was her at eight, nine years old. We were all certain she would become the engineer in the family. She loves science and math and is always good at arts, crafts, and literature. She's an avid and prolific reader. Sunshine is as much an introvert as she's an extrovert. She enjoys being out inside and savors her quiet moments unbothered. But she also likes being out and about mingling with her friends and colleagues, at least those she likes. She can be reserved, but also quite outgoing. It depends, on, of course, on your negotiated relationship with her. As I stated earlier, she individualizes her relationship with each person in her life, and whatever classification you've been fitted into help to determine the nature of her interactions with you. While Sophie is super quiet at times, she is also very competitive, especially when it comes to track and field back in high school. She hated to be the one to let the team down and would run each leg of the relay if it meant it would help the team win. Maybe do it myself then, she would proclaim. She would never take anyone's shine away though. In fact, G always, G's always incredibly supportive and could easily hold the position in the limelight as she could in the background. She hates braggadocio and prefers that folks remain grounded humble and without pretensions. She also lives by the ma mantra, you do good, you do yourself, you do bad, you do yourself, which we all learned here in Sunday school from none other than the child church founding father, no long gone, Pastor Bishop L.A. Stapleton. Sophie's all goodness. She is, however, not one to be messed with. I mean, she's not afraid to tell you to piss off and un but only if provoked. And you should, should you be on the receiving end of such an epic cuss out? No one, and I mean not a single person would deem you not deserving. You're lucky, she would say. <laughs> and then with a level of righteous indignation would unsuccess when unsuccessfully pleading your case for favors that were not fully fleshed out or, 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 as she saw it, warranted. Come ya, baby, she would say to Genial, Deja, Jovan, Anna, Cece, or any of her beloved nieces and nephews, even if they weren't on their best behavior but showed some penitence to their misdeeds. On Sophie loves you, you hear? At my mother's insistence, we will now talk a little bit about Sophie's educational background. She began her early education at James Hill Primary School at the ripe old age of three years old. She somehow convinced some of the older kids to take her over to see her mommy at the big school and refused to be left behind at the basic school close by. She would spend a few years as a first grader, but she didn't mind, as her mommy, her favorite person, was close by. After primary school, Sylvia attended Clarendon College and later attended church, Teachers College in Mandeville, she would continue to pursue her, high, her pursuit of higher education, graduating with honors um, at UWIC and earning a master's degree in mathematics at Central Connecticut University. Mind you, Shannon had to drag her kicking and screaming to start both MBA and MA's programs in mathematics and, uh, and education leadership because it required her to leave her beloved mommy and daddy all, and all her work family at Christiana High School, which she clearly loathed to do. G didn't care much for change. She liked what she liked when she liked it. That's it. But once her mind is made up, G's always fully committed. And like everything else she does, she of course excels, excelled in both programs. She was one of the few students strongly encouraged by her professors at Central Connecticut University to follow up with a PhD after her master's. This is enough, she said. I want to go home. I can't leave mommy alone for so long, her response, um, when we shower her with praise for her accomplishments and how incredibly bright we was, she was, was an unabashed, <laughs> not true. <laughs> Sophie loves fiercely. 
If you are one of her persons, you sure, you're sure to know it. She had a special bond with each of her nieces and nephews. It is hardly an overstatement to say that she is second mother at various points to Janiel, Javon, Deja, and all of us siblings. She, she's on more than one occasion talked me into getting on a bus and kidnapping one of the baby nephews um, or nieces. Once we rode several hours to fetch baby G niece Janiel. Apparently, we needed to take her home, Janiel, with us, well, because it's the holidays. Never mind that Janiel's mom had no such plan for her child. But Sophie, not to be deterred on such endeavors, assured Jay's mom that she could come see her child at the house anytime soon. <laughs> she goes to stay in the room, Sophie explained, which logically, at least in Sophie's mind, sufficiently explained everything. This is a pattern of behavior with G that dates further back than I initially realized. She's always identifying some child that we should dote on and that we should somehow end up bringing home to Mumi. Let's see. There is Mary, J Janelle, Jody, and I'll never forget Rosie, a little girl she found wandering outside lost that we cared for for an entire semester when Sophie was about nine or 10 years old. While she stopped bringing kids home after high school, Donnett continued her philanthropic endeavors, mostly helping struggling students that display an aptitude and willingness to learn, but lack varying levels of support. So many of those we have heard from in the past couple of weeks are among those who benefited from and are grateful for her steadfast commitment to helping others. G loves her friends. Most consider her a sister. She's guarded her friendships as well. G, can I come to your school today and hang out while you work? Nope. She would say, you have your own friends and I have mine. <laughs> it took her a long time, it took me a long time to figure out that as her younger sisters, Shannon and I, who followed her around constantly and wanted to do everything that G did and be wherever G was, barely gave her space to breathe and relied on her ample um, uh, guidance on our entire lives. This is not to say that Sophie was selfish, far from it. But she enjoyed having some things to herself, at least on she, until she decided she was ready to share. One more thing. What's on Jesus? It's Funny story. Which one of the brothers, I won't call names, one brother of ours is not going to like being cheered, but that captures the essence of Sophie's multifaceted personality. Everyone thinks this was my idea, but this was all Sophie. She decided our very rambunctious baby brother at the time would be more mellow if in fact he were a she. <laughs> and so she transformed one of her brightest yellow skirts and white top and made an amazing outfit for our newly ordained fashionista brother sister, appropriately renamed by no other than sober Sophie herself, Shelly Belly. <laughs> she adorned him with earrings, jewelry, etc. And I must say, she he made a very pretty girl. <laughs> and I don't know, perhaps G was onto something, as he was hardly the handful he tended to be during this brief transition. Of course, our father threw a fit when he came home to all that. <laughs> Not that G, that phase G, after all, I did say she was that is of everything. He knew it, she knew it, we all knew it, she had the situation handled. Yes, G could be silly like that. G is very thoughtful. She would have stayed if she could prevent hurting her parents and family as we're all hurting today. But alas, she has had to go. As her ray of sunshine moved across the horizon, January 26, 2024, we know that this is hardly farewell, but rather, until we see you again. She is survived by mother, Justina Sappleton, father, Winston Sappleton, siblings, Livingston, Nicholas, Anthony, Nicolene, Alwyn, Aldwin, Alwyn, and I, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, cousins, and close friends and families. We all love you, Sunshine. You are the best person I know. 
And we'll do well to live our lives with the grace, gusto, determination, purpose, and warmth that you embody. We wish you could have stayed longer, but understand you had to go. May the heavens be with you. Rest peacefully, hon, until we meet again. Love you, G. Love you, G. Love you, G. Love you, G. Praise the name of the Lord, church. Praise the name of the Lord again. Hallelujah. You have just heard a lot about Sophie. Hallelujah. Was a wonderful soul. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's hard to lose a loved ones through the grave. Hallelujah. For the Lord will give you the strength. Hallelujah. To hear on. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We now move on to the family prayer. And that will be done by Reverend Oakton Bill. We will be calling the prayer for the family. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody give him and praise him, man. We have a right to praise him. He's a good father. Meets the occasion. We need to lift our hands and give him praise. What a good God. Tell your neighbor, what a good God. Hallelujah. Somebody just wave your hand in the atmosphere. We are celebrating a life that well spent. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I'm inviting the rest of us to stand while the Sabbath family will remain in their seat as I pray for them. Hallelujah. Oh, bless God. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. What a friend, a precious friend. So complete and so divine. If we serve this whole world over, there's not another we can find. What a good God you are. Hallelujah. Here we are in this funeral service. We are celebrating the life of our dear friend. She's gone to a better place. Here we leave behind her family. They are grieving at this moment. But Father, I commit them in your hands. Because you are the great comforter. Give them peace in these troubled times. May the light shine upon them. The peace that pass all human understanding will rest upon them continually. I pray that you guide their going out and their coming in. I pray whatever they do it shall prosper. They will be like the tree that is planted by the rivers of water. Father, they have already blessed. And today, God, I pronounce upon them more blessing. God, they are going out and they are coming in. Preserve them from the snares of the wicked, from the nights of pestilence, from the destruction that waits at that noonday. God, have your way in their life. Give them peace as I commit them in your keeping. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Bailey. Hallelujah for praying for the family. Hallelujah. Prayer. Nothing new. Procession him. We are gonna I'm gonna give out some other here. Um you're being patient with us. I like your patience. Bless the Lord. So I'm asking you just to keep that patient just a little more, not for long. Bless God. Uh, we're going to have the ministers, hallelujah, we'll lead from the front with the choir. Bless the Lord. And then we'll have the family member with the, the pall bearers with the casket. And the family member will follow. And then the audience will follow behind us. Bless the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. We are going to sing hallelujah. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy. And